Get back, Link. Looks like you're coming around. Link, a terrible thing has happened. The evil shadow spirit has been released. Impa, the leader of Kakariko Village, had sealed the evil shadow spirit in the bottom of the well. But, the force of the evil spirit got so strong that the seal of the well broke and it escaped into the world. I believe Impa has gone to the Shadow Temple to seal it again, but she will be in danger without any help. Link, Impa is one of the six sages. Destroy the evil Shadow Spirit and save Impa. There is an entrance to the Shadow Temple beneath the graveyard behind this village. The only thing I can do for you is teach you the melody that will lead you to the Shadow Temple. This is the melody that will draw you into the infinite darkness that absorbs even time. Listen to this, the Nocturne of Shadow. You've learned the Nocturne of Shadow. Let me take care of the village. I'm counting on you, Link. Welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Previously, I got the big Goron sword and listened to some opinions of other YouTubers on this game. This time, those with a hawk eye or those with a really, really good understanding of this game might have noticed that the area I was standing in after that cutscene was not perfect. The reason for that is I forgot about that cutscene's existence. That cutscene actually triggers after completing the first three adult temples, and I needed to go inside Kakariko Village multiple times in order to actually do the Big Oron Sword side quest. So to record the video footage that I did for that video, I kind of maybe sorta had to record that and splice it in here later. I actually might have recorded that during the day, so or during the day in game. So that might have looked weird already because it's nighttime right now because I needed to get that gold sculpture at night. Yeah. Anyway, there's a few things I'd like to note. One of which is that the well that that guy actually came out of is empty. It was actually full when I was a child, but as of now, it is not letting me climb down because of the fact that I was not low enough to let go so I wouldn't take damage, so it let me climb back up. Anyway, there's this area right down here. This well is empty, and there seems to be something past this point. I can't break it with my sword, I can't blow it up, I've already tried multiple times when I was actually uh, playing this game for the first time. Speaking of which, I went back to my original save file, and I only had one more full heart than I did at this moment. So, um, I'm doing a little bit better than on my first playthrough, go figure. But there is something down there, and that's kind of foreshadowing something I can do later on down the line, but, um, that's really not important. 
I'm not going to be tackling that just yet. Everything you just saw is going to be put on hold. I'm not going to go to the Shattered, sh shattered Temple. Wow. That would be kind of weird, just a bunch of shattered glass everywhere. That that'd be pretty fun. That'd be pretty fun, though not for Link if he didn't wear shoes. Though even if he did wear shoes, they're made out of leather, so wouldn't that still hurt? Wouldn't that still kind of suck? I feel like it would still kind of suck. Uh. Anyway, on a more important note, I'm not going to the Shadow Temple just yet. I'm not doing the things I need to do to go to the Shadow Shat Shadow Temple. Because I'm really not in the mood. I don't feel like it. I want to go around and explore. Because there are a lot of things that I actually figured out existed. That I didn't know existed beforehand. I've never attempted 100% this game. And I've never watched a full 100% playthrough of it. So there were a lot of things I was unaware of. While actually playing this game. And I found out about a few of those things. And they're really, really, really in my way. So I wanted to go out and get them. Um, something that I wanted to actually show off is that there are still a few things I can do as an adult before I go do something else, which I might have spoiled with my wording of that. There is a gold sculpture that actually is over here at Gen's castle. Right back here. So I wanted to grab that because you might have noticed that if this is grabbed and put into my inventory, I have 30 gold sculptures. That is only 20 more until I get the base reward that I actually do want. And there's also something else I kind of wanted to talk about while I'm over here at Gen's castle. Right here. This exists. I can't do anything with it just yet, but remember that that's there. You'll know what that is later on, and I mean much, much later on down the line. And it's kind of out of the way, but just remember it. It probably doesn't seem out of the way now, but it will seem out of the way later. You'll get what I mean. At some point in time but it's really worth it really really worth it so remember where that is I didn't remember to mention that so I thought it'd be kind of neat to mention now uh, there's actually something I want to do before I go back here uh, there's a few things I can do in Kakariko village specifically uh, within the potion shop in the gold sculpture house so let's go do those things shall we now that I'm back in Kakariko Village, there are a few things I want to do and show off. Um, I kind of wanted to go and get that gold sculpture before anything else because it would just make things a little bit easier on me. And uh, there's also something else I want to do. I'd also like to note, I really, really like the atmosphere of Kakariko Village after the whole shadow beast attack thing. Because it's just really, really interesting and it really does build up a lot of tension for the shadow temple. Which I'm not going to worry about at all because I'm not doing the shadow temple just yet. But, potion shop. Everything here is overpriced and not worth it. But, if I go back here, it takes me to a little alcove, which is located near the back of Kakariko Village, which, fun fact, I've always taken a really weird path to get to. Now, what you're supposed to do is go through the potion shop, but I always hop on top of that fence, roll jump off, or use a cucko as a child. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, I just guess no one corrected me. So I continued to do that throughout all of my playthroughs of this game, and I only realized that that was there far, far too late. I want to make sure there's no gold sculptures up here. I feel like there's not, but I just, again, want to make 100% sure. No, it's just these lovers, so it's fine. Uh, don't mind me, just let me look for gold sculptures around here. Okay, there's nothing good. Uh, how are you guys doing? <laughs> what an annoying person interrupting us like this. Don't you agree, my love? Okay, that's that's fine. Love you too. I don't think I can break this or do anything with this just yet. This rock is the thing I'm talking about. Uh, it's worth a shot. I mean, it really can't hurt. Yeah, no, can't do anything with it just yet. Uh, the red rocks are actually the rocks that can be broken by the Megaton Hammer, just in case you were wondering. I forgot to mention that, so I apologize about that. There's nothing else I can really do in Kakariko right now. I believe there's actually a shop all the way up here that I might as well check out. I don't think I've gone there. I also don't think it's that important, so that's why I haven't gone here. Oh, it's the bazaar. But now it's not in... Okay, well, that's neat to note. Uh, after Hyrule gets taken over by Ganon, the bazaar moves from the castle town 
into Kakariko Village just in case you didn't buy the Hylian Shield beforehand. So if you were missing the Hylian Shield and you didn't want to go into the graveyard and look for it for about 5 seconds, there you go, that's there for you. Um, also, something else, I keep leaving Kakariko Village because I keep forgetting there's things for me to do here. I forgot to do a lot while I was in Kakariko Village as an adult. I said there was one more thing I could get from the Dampe race, but I wasn't exactly sure how to get it. But now I know, and now I will actually go do it, because it's really simple and really easy. So I'll meet you in the Dampe race, and meet you at the end, and tell you exactly what you get and how to get it. Alright, I actually made it this time. Essentially, you just have to get less than one minute in the Dampe race, and there you go. You get a piece of heart. It's really easy to get. I messed up once because I was a complete idiot, but it's not that bad to get. Don't worry about it too much. Um, also, apparently there's another way to get the heart piece that is sitting right over there usually without actually having to do the Dampe race again. Um, you can stand on this, easily climb on this, and then just jump over there apparently. I didn't know about that, so that's pretty interesting. I don't know why I can't climb on it right now. That's a little bit weird. Uh, I want to try it at least once. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Come on, I'm sure there's also a lot of other ways you can actually get back up without having to do the Dampe race, but this is just one of them. Um, not doing too hot, so I'm just gonna kinda quit. I already got that heart piece, so it doesn't matter that much. But with that being said and done, uh, I no longer have a reason to be in Kakariko Village right now. I've done everything I can do to my knowledge other than actually go get the gold sculpture of things, which is the entire reason I came back here. So no, I'm not done here. My memory is just kind of terrible, I guess. I'm a little bit scatterbrained at the moment because I'm tired and... Yeah. But here we go. Let's see what the third reward is. I actually don't remember, so everything you're seeing right now is pretty much blind. The curse has been broken, thank you! Here's a reward for you. And it's the giant's wallet. What a huge wallet. Now you can carry up to 500 rupees. That's really helpful, especially considering what I'm about to go do. So I appreciate that. I'm actually really, really happy with that. Um, while I'm here, I might as well go fill up my wallet a little bit. I talked about previously uh, there was an area to get 200 rupees up near Goron City. So, I might actually warp up there real quick, and I'll see you back when I get those 200 rupees, or when I get those 200 rupees. So, uh, yeah. I'd like to mention something while I'm actually working my way back up to Goron City. Um, there have been a few things that have been on my mind, none of which are important. Uh, what was I actually gonna mention? I, I remembered what was important, then I thought about something completely stupid, and then I forgot. Uh, well, I guess we can talk about the stupid thing as that's still in my memory, but, um, I was watching, <laughs> I was, I was talking with some friends and I was just reminiscing about some, uh, something I watched a long time ago, uh, and then we started talking about M&Ms, and I remembered this one commercial about M&Ms, and it was with Danny DeVito. <laughs> and, uh, the red M&M was pretty much like, oh, man, it was, she, sorry, he was talking, uh, first of all, to the, the naked M&M, you know, the one that's brown and just chocolate, which at that point, like, is it even an M&M? It's just, it's just chocolate, just a little round circle of chocolate, but, um, he was talking to the, the brown M&M, and, um, Oh no, I remember what I was going to talk about. There's actually something I completely forgot to get here in Goron City, so it's actually good that we're coming back here. That's what I was going to say. Uh, but more more importantly, the M&M story. Um, <laughs> oh, what's wrong with me? Uh, he was talking to the brown M&M, and he was like, you know what? I, I just, you know, I, sometimes I just wish that I was, and then he like stopped, and he was like, oh, look, a lucky penny. Uh, oh, anyway, sometimes I just wish I could be human. And then he just turned into Danny DeVito with a red shirt. He was like, whoa! I'm human! And he just ran up to people randomly. He was like, Do you want to eat me? Do you want to eat me? And it was... It was a great commercial. It was a great commercial. 200... I'm filling up that wallet a lot more than I thought. That's actually fantastic. I forgot that was there. That's great. It's a great thing I came in here. This is kind of a little maze that you could navigate through with bombs if you wanted to. But I really, really wouldn't recommend it because your wallet will most likely be very, very small when you have your bombs. 
uh, and not your Megaton Hammer. So just come in here later to get a crap ton of rupees. I actually forgot how many there were. I don't think there's anything else in here. There's only about three chests in here, if I remember correctly. So, uh, that's really neat. I'm glad I could actually show that off while still talking about something important like m and m people but there's also something else i forgot in here there's a lot a lot i forgot to do within that's kind of embarrassing that's a little bit embarrassing there's a lot i forgot to do within here uh because there's a lot i could do that i just didn't uh which is usually the way it goes with me there's a lot i can do am i gonna do it Eh, probably not it should be right up here there's a gold sculpture in here that i again neglected i make it sound like it's a child and i am gonna get child sir what's it called child protective services called on me every time i'll meet you when i actually get that gold skull shell how does that sound probably sounds a little bit better than actually you know what you know what never mind never mind there's another story i've been meaning to tell which is going to get told <coughs> anyway a long long time ago back in like episode four or five one of the two i could be completely wrong on those numbers I said there was a story that I had, and it, it came from a dream where I was just like, I, I don't remember dreams often, this is why it stuck out so much to me. I usually either don't have dreams at all, or just end up forgetting them a little bit, or just like not remembering them at all, meaning I, I didn't know I had a dream, so I don't think I have dreams, I don't know. The point is, this one dream I remembered vividly, like it was just sticking out in my mind so much, and that dream was actually about an origami puppet and a cop fighting crime. And I feel the reason I actually did have this dream was mainly because I, I, I don't watch NCIS, but my parents watch NCIS a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. <laughs> so I was, I was doing homework and they were watching NCIS and I must have just gotten police shows in the brain so I was just kind of sitting there um I was laying down what am I talking about I was just asleep and th this this dream about those that th those cops those copper boys and <laughs> the origami puppet it was just like it was so dumb it was I'm trying to find the right way to describe it because it's been a while since I actually thought about this so it's not in my mind the the best um, I might talk about it a little bit while I'm doing some exploring, but just just keep that in mind. It was about an origami puppet and a cop. But more importantly, actually talking about Ocarina of Time again, there's actually something that I haven't shown off yet. As you can see, the A prompt says drop. There's a reason for this. Once you get into your adult link form, you aren't stuck being an adult. You can actually turn back the clock. And now, I'm a kid again. You might be wondering, what's the purpose of coming back to a kid when I have an adult version of Link, which is essentially just a better version of Link? The reason for that is, there are small places adult Link can't fit into, one of which I'm actually going to show off pretty soon. So you want to be a kid for those, and the kid can just do a few other things the adult couldn't, like uh, use a boomerang, or uh, put on a mask. Wow. Yeah, it's really not that interesting, but you can turn back to being a kid. Nothing's really changed since the last time we were a child, other than the fact that the episode count has gone up quite a bit. But we're here again, and there are quite a few things I have yet to do, some of which are in Kakariko... not Kakariko Village. That's not the, what I was thinking of, though something important will be in Kakariko Village. Uh, but there are quite a few things I can do that I just didn't do when I was a child. Uh, one of which being right here, which I can't enter just yet, is the treasure chest contest temporarily closed to open... Uh, tonight. I'm not gonna do that just yet. I'll probably do that at the end of the next video. Just because I don't really have a means of doing that right now. I don't know what's in here. I didn't really explore. This is... B oh, the bomb true bowling alley. Uh, I don't really want to use my money here, and I believe it's just a heart piece you can get from here, so I'm not that interested. I also don't just, like, bomb chews at all. So, yeah, there you go. But, um, there's also something else pretty interesting to note. I was about to start on my story again, but there's something else I need to talk about before that. Right over here 
is the drawbridge. It's not broken. It's a good old fixed drawbridge. If you stand right around the end, right here, and play the sun song... It will become night. Now, if you remember, the drawbridge closes at night, something we didn't actually have to worry about while we were adult because the drawbridge just didn't exist. If we stand on the drawbridge in the, the slightly, slightly wrong area. Yeah, so I, I stood in the wrong spot. That didn't turn out too hot. Um, now I have to swim all the way back and play the sun song one more time. How frustrating it's honestly not that bad and a majority of the time I get this first try this was just one of the rare chances where I actually somehow messed this easy trick up so don't think this is hard because I didn't get it first try this is exceedingly easy though I guess that just goes to show my skill level as a player I'm I'm not I'm not too good Though, I, I can kind of say that the controls of the N64 may have affected me if I want to damage control, but whatever. Uh, let's make it nighttime one more time. I messed up again. Come on, I know what it's- okay, there we go. I finally got it. I, I'd like to note something. When you're doing the three song songs, or three note songs, my bad. I actually do end up like messing up slightly and then I start spamming to try to get it slight uh, to get it right and in the end I just kind of start spamming and hoping that one day I'll actually get it right and then when I do get it right it's like a it's like a surprise it's kind of nice but up here on the top there are three red rupees that's about 15 buckaroonies I think maybe that might be 20 per rupee but uh, it's nice I forgot that it existed I knew about it beforehand, I just kind of forgot it was there. So if you stand on the edge, and come here to the drawbridge, then you will be able to get some money, pretty easily. Not the best, but you, you can still get money. It's not the best way to get money, it's probably a better way of saying that, but you can still get money here. Um, you can just walk back into Hyrule Castle Town and then reset and get money that way. But again, it's not the most efficient way to grind rupees, so I just wouldn't recommend doing it that way. Besides, you probably won't have a lot of problems with rupees if you don't go for potions, like, I really recommend you don't. So, it's really not a big deal to grind rupees, I don't see it being done often, and I don't recommend doing it. But on another note, let's get back to that story I was talking about. The origami puppet was like... <laughs> It was really dumb. This this one cop had the desire to make origami puppets. He he loved doing it. It was his hobby. And then one day, one of them came to life. It was very very spooky. It got uh, inhabited by a ghost. And that origami puppet was actually a former cop. So the former cop <laughs> was helping. It was like his crime solving partner, like Scooby Doo. And he was though Scooby Doo really didn't help solve crimes. He was more of a, a dunce. But whatever. Um. He kind of just, he helped solve crimes. But then you found out, oh yeah, and sorry, sorry, the boss. The boss, the big bad boss of the police. Uh, he was really, really mad that the origami puppet exists because it was like a freak in nature. And he was like, this can't exist. This really can't exist. Why are you letting this exist? So he set up traps to try to kill the origami puppet. Um, and send the soul back to where it belonged. Which is all up in heaven. <laughs> and in the end, they found out that the soul that was inhabiting the origami puppet was actually the soul of the deceased wife of the policeman who was murdered. The, the wife was murdered. And at some point, after the, the boss found out about that and he was finally really, really happy that he was able to see his wife again, even if it was in the form of an origami puppet, uh, he ended up, or the origami puppet ended up getting killed again. And the soul got sent back to the underworld, or underworld, wait, no, wait, I ended up saying getting sent to heaven, that's what I meant, not underworld, wow, that was a little bit, uh, a little bit of a, a bad slip up on my part, also, there's a block puzzle in here that gets you a piece of heart, I never knew about this area until this week, and I'm actually really disappointed about that, because I like little outcoves like this, they're just really neat, they've always been interesting to me, I used to like to play in cardboard boxes, don't make fun of me, it was, it was the most fun time I had in my life. I had my own little hideout in a cardboard box. Um, so I guess I'm the opposite of 
claustrophobic. I like small spaces, and I think they're really neat if they're, like, hidden. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what I like. I've probably talked about the fact that I like Outcoast before, but whatever. Uh, back to my more important story. I think that's the last thing I actually needed to get in the Lion Ranch, but, uh, anyway. Uh, so that, this, somehow half the soul of the origami puppet, aka the boss's wife, uh, got stuck on Earth. And was, like, dropping hints as to who her killer was to the, uh, the partner that the origami puppet was a partner of. Um, and he kind of went rogue, because he, he thought the boss actually killed the origami puppet, so he, like, beat up the boss. And that got him fired. And, uh, he went rogue, and he was a rogue cop. And he ended up figuring out that the killer was actually the boss's secretary, who loved the boss in high school, but then the wife of the boss fell in love with the boss in high school, and they ended up getting married, making the secretary really mad, and really, really yearn for the boss, so much so that she killed the wife in the first place, and as soon as the origami puppet came back, she was very, very angry, and, uh, and, and as soon as she, uh, she figured out that it was the wife of the boss come back from the dead, she got really, really angry, and, uh, decided to kill the origami puppet. And that was when, like, that's when the show ended. And I don't know why such a convoluted and stupid show idea just came, came to me in my sleep. But it, it certainly existed. It certainly happened. And I've been meaning to get that off my chest. I always forget to do that, but I'm glad I actually got to talk about it before the series ended. So, there you go. I might actually upload that as a separate video because it's, it's, it's extremely important and you need to know about it. But, uh, anyway. This guy. I only bought one bean from him before and I planted it right there. But I have cash, cash money, aka 500 ruples. I'm about to spend all of them to get some more magic beans. Um, um, um. How about some magic beans? Well, they're not that popular yet. Uh, how about uh, 20 rupees for one piece? I'm gonna actually read out all this guy's commentary except for what he says at the very end because he just tells you how to use magic beans. But I really do like the way this guy changes. Not necessarily with the inflation of the price of the magic beans, but more with his commentary. Because every single time you buy magic beans, he makes them sound more, more, more important than they were beforehand. He was like, ah! Before he was like, they're not that popular yet. But now he's saying, how about some magic beans? They're getting to be quite popular. 30 rupees for one piece. How about it? And it just keeps escalating, and I love this guy's character, despite the fact that he only appears here. I don't know why I'm doing that noise for the chomp, but uh, how about some magic beans? They're all the rage! I've sold them like three times at this point. Yeah, uh, I can't really do anything about it. I mean, he definitely does understand supply and demand, so I'll give him that. We have popular magic beans. You'll regret if we don't buy them now. 50 rupees for one piece, just for now. These are the super popular magic beans. In case you're wondering, they will sell out soon. Super price! Only 60 rupees for one piece. We have the super rare magic beads. This could be your last chance. Special price! 70 rupees for one piece. With that, does he sell any more? No, no, no. We have the legendary magic beans. I'll sell them only to you. Super price, 80 rupees. Do you have any more to sell me? Because I'm running low on rupees at this point. Uh, no, no. Do you want magic beans? They aren't cheap, but but you still want them? I can't let go for less than 90 rupees a piece. Uh, if the next one costs 100 rupees, then I'm actually kind of done. We have magic beads. Do you want them? Huh? Huh? A hundred rupees for one piece. <laughs> You're actually crazy. I, I ran out of money. I started off with 500 rupees. So even with the maxed out rupee count, because I have the biggest wallet possible, 
you can't buy all the magic beans. I need 100 rupees to buy all of them. So all that money I just got, yeah, it really just went, not to waste, but it really just went down the drain in a sense. It's just gone. I really, really wanted to get those because there are a lot of places I want to go to and actually plant magic beans in. Uh, even if I've already gotten the heart piece that necessarily correlates to that area, just because I feel like it would be nice, it would it would make me feel a little goody two shoes inside. So I thought that would be a pretty nice idea. There's an area I probably should have gone to as an adult, but I can do things in it as a child too. I'm gonna go there a little bit later, but for now I want to go back to the Lost Woods because there's actually something I can do now that I didn't know about before. I'm kind of sensing a trend. There's a lot of stuff I can do now that I just didn't think about beforehand. So. That's a little bit crazy. That's a little bit crazy. No, it's not. I don't know a lot about this game, despite the fact that I do talk like I understand every single nook and cranny of it. I really don't. I've never 100% of this game. I don't plan to. I just know what I hear from word of mouth and what I've done myself. I really am not a connoisseur of this game. I don't watch speedruns of it often. I don't watch other playthroughs of it very often. It's just kind of a game that I enjoy playing casually, very, very casually, and, you know, that's fine. I, I have a lot of games like that, and I don't really go for 100% in all of them. In fact, that's the majority of my playthroughs, I just don't go for 100% in them. I just kind of enjoy taking my time in games, I guess. Um, something I actually didn't know beforehand, if you can see kind of like a white tint to an area, it, it works better in the day. Uh, but if you can keep, if you can kind of see that uh, a loading zone is starting to appear near the end of a tunnel, that'll actually show you that yes, that area is not a place you can go to. Right over there to the left, you saw that I couldn't go there because there was a little bit of a white dot at the end. Uh, this is something I didn't remember, but uh, it's nice to note now that I do know. So it's going to be completely pitch black if you can actually go to that area. But some areas aren't like that. This is not. Is this the area I'm supposed to be? I mean, it's worth a shot. I surrender in return. I'll sell you Deku Nuts 20 rupees. Dude, I just spent a lot of money on some beans that I don't even know how important they're going to be. So, I could really care less about some Deku Sticks. Or Deku Nuts, whatever it was. I actually didn't know there was an area here, so that kind of works out well. It's pretty nice. There are two areas that I can actually go uh, put magic beans in while I'm actually in the Lost Woods. So, might as well do that. I think there's an area I can drop down to. Uh, might as well get this guy first. He's gonna sell me something else. Whenever you see Deku scrubs that look specifically like this, they always try to sell you stuff. And they're really not that great. I don't even know what you, you want to sell me. I, I wasn't paying attention, so I apologize about that. There's a hole that I can get to somewhere right here. Perfect. And there's something else I need to equip. This mask is something I've been holding onto for a long, long time. And I actually know the purpose for it now, so here it is. If you wear this in this specific hole, all these Decker Scrubs will start chasing around you. For what reason? Well, I guess we'll figure that out in just a second. If you go over here... All of the young Deku Scrub brothers agree. You look exactly like our Sacred Forest Totem. As an offering from us. Please accept these Deku Sticks. We will also enhance your carrying skills. Abracadabra! Alakazam! And now you can pick up more Deku Sticks. Will this be useful to me? Uh, probably later. I mean, I'd never really had a problem with the amount of Deku Sticks I could hold beforehand, but... That's fine. It's worth your time if you want to upgrade everything, and I don't think it's a super big deal to do, uh... To go out of your way to do that, it doesn't take too much time, and it is a good purpose for this skull mask, but that's not everything I can do with this skull mask. There's more! If I, uh... Actually, it would probably be better if I just reset right now so I could enter the Lost Woods again, because I know exactly where I'm going if I'm going straight through the Lost Woods, uh, through the normal route, but if I start walking back in it, that's when I really start to get lost. Right over here to the left, as soon as you enter the Lost Woods, there will be this skull kit. I believe he purchases this mask. I'm not 100% sure. If I put it on and talk to him, no, it doesn't work out. Hold on, can I talk to him? Please? No? Uh, maybe he wants to play with me? He does. That's not quite- Oh, you want me to play Saria's song? Okay, I'll play Saria's song for you. 
I actually didn't know what he wanted. I was like, do you want to play with me like the other Skull Kids, or... He went, no, he just wants me to play Saria Song. You know, Saria Song, we should be friends. Here, take this. Easy piece of heart that I didn't know about beforehand. I thought I could sell my mask to this guy, but uh, maybe not. I can try one more time, but I don't think it's going to work out. Uh, under that mask, aren't you that Kokiri kid? Quite an unusual mask you have there. <laughs> I like it. It may make you look a little bit tougher. Hey, uh, why don't you give it to me? Okay. Yowza! I'm gonna wear this all the time! He just gave you 10 rupees for this 20 rupee mask! You lost money on that deal! Go back to the mask shop and pay 20 rupees for the mask. The difference will have to come out of your own pocket. Well, even if it does have to come out of my own pocket, it was kind of a nice gesture, and I don't mind giving it up to Skull Kid. Despite the fact that in the sequel to this game, he will become a big, big nuisance. Uh, he's a nice guy right now, and I really do want him to grow up to be a, a nice boy. A nice, a nice boy. And have a, a lot of friends. So, uh, I'll just let that slide for now. The fact that he kind of shortchanged me ten bucks. So, whatever. I'm gonna go back to Kakariko Village. Not- I always say Kakariko Village, because that's the big- the big bad town that you always go to. I mean... Castle Town. That's what I mean. I'll go back to Castle Town, I'll meet you there in just a second, and we will see what exactly happens- or what I exactly get now that I've sold that mask I've been holding on to for a long time. This video might be long, similar to the amount of time I've been holding on to that mask. Now that I'm back in Castle Town, I can see exactly what that new mask is going to be. I don't remember what it's going to be. I really have no idea. So this is going to be a little bit crazy for me. A little bit wacky for me. Let's buy it. Oh, greetings, you sold it. Please pay me back 20 rupees for the skull mask now. Payment received. It is the spooky mask. A sad wooden mask. Yeah, that definitely doesn't give you a very good look. Um... Apparently, it says I can show it off to many people, and before I end off this episode, I kind of do want to see how people react to it, so... Let's try it out. Oh, what's your problem? That's a pretty apt reaction, I think. Hey, kid, you can't... S oh... They apparently don't care about spooky things as long as they have each other. That's kind of romantic in its own way. A mask? When I was a little kid, I also wore masks around. What? You say you can't imagine me doing that? I can. I mean, maybe not with that beard now, because that would... Does he have a beard? Oh, that, that... No, he does. He has a really, really long beard, so I really can't imagine you wearing a mask now with that really long beard, which is obviously kind of solid and wouldn't work out all that well now. But anyway, what am I talking about? We're done. This episode... It's completed. I've done a lot of side stuff, and next episode, I think I'm going to continue to do side stuff. There's something I can do which actually will help me progress in the story, and I kind of want to do it. But I really want to do other stuff first. So next time on The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, we'll continue doing side stuff and get to that main story garbage a little bit later. But that's for next time. Until then.